cruelty. Animal cruelty. Animal cruelty. Animal cruelty. Animal cruelty. Animal cruelty. Animal cruelty. One inspiring story that I've heard is about a woman and her husband in Texas who were farming beef, cattle rearing be uh, cattle for beef, and um, the woman, she decided to, that she couldn't do it anymore because she saw them go, she would raise them, and she just felt more and more empathy toward them and realized she had to make a change. So uh, she told her husband that if, if he drives one more load of, of, of cattle, that she was going to take his money and go and buy them back from the feedlot, and he would look like the biggest fool. got a call from somebody and he said that um, he has four chickens that he rescued and whether we could take him and I said well what's the story and he said he found him about an hour from here on the side of the road he was driving along and he saw something huddled in the snow and he realized it was a chicken so he stopped and he saw that over the bank there were boxes full of chickens that somebody had dumped and they pretty much most of them had frozen to death we had back in 2009 the Bushway veal production facility that, that uh, we were involved in an undercover investigation and there was a, a whistleblower from the agency, the U.S. Agency of Agriculture, U.S. Department of Agriculture, and um, you know, ended up resulting in, in felony uh, animal cruelty charges for the, the worker and the, the owner of that facility and, and played out over 2009 and 2010. That kind of galvanized a lot of um, uh, interest here in the issue, and I think uh, was part of sort of kicking off a national movement towards enacting some of these bans. The um, so I got called on scene. There was a couple of dozen of cows, um, and the the situation was the uh, farmer had had an injury, couldn't care for his cattle anymore, and somebody else came in to care for the cattle, and wasn't able to care for them appropriately. So some of the cattle on the, on the farm had, had died. I think the Vermont um, meat industry reflects Vermont's identity. It's almost tied together with what you think about Vermont when you think about dairy farming and the picturesque hills with the black and white Holsteins roaming. I think it paints a picture, um, but it's also a deceiving one. But I, I think that Vermonters feel attacked when you discuss the underlying issue. I think the meat industry reflects on Vermont culture. We, we have a, a, a I think Vermont likes to, and in, and in many cases is true, we have a, a history of small uh, farm operations that date back many years. We still need to have vigilance in enforcing the, the laws uh, that we have in place, um, even if some of the, the scale of the problems are smaller than in other places in the country. Laws protecting livestock, unfortunately, are not the same as that the laws that protect our pets. Um, and they're also, even though there are some laws, they are very, very rarely enforced, which I think is just a crime in itself because they need call after call after call. I mean, it has to be extreme cruelty because these animals are just property, which seems so hypocritical. There's actually one bill that we're working on right now in the legislative session to help improve um, living standards for livestock. It's a, it's a fairly modest bill, but it's intended to go, as I said before, animal cruelty on, on a farm uh, with livestock and poultry are, are investigated just like 
dogs, cats, other issues of animal cruelty. What this threshold is between something that is and isn't cruelty and also having something clear enough in the law to articulate that to the owner of the animals because in most cases, dogs, cats, livestock, whatever, the first choice in trying to address uh, deficiencies in how animals are being treated is to work and educate that owner um, because many times it's it um, I, it's not necessarily the intent of that owner to be inflicting pain or suffering. As a whole, I think that Vermonters are not informed at all about uh, the animal agricultural industry and how it's tied to the environment, but it's very hard to get someone who is, wants to be willfully ignorant to change. It's very difficult. So um, that one, it's, it's not an easy answer. I think social media has the power to really change people's opinions. It also has the power to convey lies as well, but as an activist, it's the greatest tool that we have, social media, absolutely. Uh, what I would like people to know about animal cruelty is that we, um, we have a lot of dedicated folks here in Vermont uh, that are trying to do the best they can to investigate uh, animal cruelty and trying to make that system uh, more effective uh, and to make sure that those that are um, responsible or, or held accountable, what, what I think most citizens can do is to just be um, vigilant in what they see and what they observe and, and what they hear from um, uh, those around them, whether it's dogs, cats, or, or livestock and, and poultry. Yeah. I think when people are cruel to animals or to anybody, really, um, oftentimes they are really... Um, disturbed beings they're really very mentally ill because anybody who is um, an empathetic being could never do that but we also are living in a society where empathy is not uh, and compassion is not really promoted heavily so i think we need to create a society where empathy and compassion are really valued again and where really that is our guiding light well i think what vermonters can do to to prevent animal cruelty would be to get engaged in what what we're doing at the state house to try to advance laws and policies that are going to uh, better care for for livestock better care for all kinds of animals um, that they are conscious about um, what food decisions they make as consumers and what contribution that is having positive or negative on the world around you. Um, the most people are going to be inclined to want to uh, do the right thing or, or, or at least go towards the right thing and, and that's what we're, we're trying to get people to do. Animals are not food and my advice would be to think about the choices you make. All your choices. Uh, every time you eat a meal, um, that was a juvenile animal. And we don't have to do it. So if we can choose not to cause harm, why would we choose to cause harm? That would be my advice. What you can do. Get involved with local organizations. Educate yourself about laws and bills that protect livestock. 
adopt meatless Mondays, and decrease your consumption of meat and dairy. If you see animal cruelty, report it. Advocate against animal cruelty. Find ways that you can help decrease animal cruelty locally and nationwide.